Welcome back to the Angel Clark Show. This is it, folks. This is the final segment of the show this evening. Just because I'm about to stop talking doesn't mean that you have to stop listening. You can head to angelclark.us. There you will find three years worth of archives of the show. You can download them, stream them, share them with your friends on Facebook, on Twitter, on Tumblr, on LinkedIn, and it's all free today. Also, make sure you check out the website, noarmycanstopanidea.com, for all the stories I wanted to share with you but didn't have time to. Now, it's Friday. That means it's Economic Roundup Day. I have on the line with me Ken Shorjan. He is the National Finance Examiner for examiner.com. He has the website, thedailyeconomist.com, and he joins us once a week to talk all things economics. Ken, I'd like to thank you for sticking around. It's greatly appreciated. And I know that you always save the best for last, so I'm assuming you have all kinds of stuff that you want to get to in this segment. Three fun things to uh, to talk about here. Um, you know, with, uh, this year has been the year of the, the minimum wage workers uh, revolting. Yes, yes, I don't is. know if they are revolting or re- they are revolting, but, you know, you can take that in any way you want. But you would figure that there's going to be blowback in some instances. And there's a there's an interesting chart that uh, has come out over since the past three months when Obama's minimum wage policy uh, and, you know, trumpeting has changed the minimum wage in a number of different states. And what they what they found out is that employ or unemployment numbers for states in uh, locations that have raised the minimum wage, they have lost jobs overall. Really? While states that did not raise the minimum wage have actually increased jobs a little bit. Well, I mean, that, that doesn't really surprise me. If you increase the minimum wage, then you end up uh, having to either increase the cost of your product or decrease the number of employees you have. Yeah, what you do is uh, you increase minimum wage, so then you pay one of your workers more, you fire the other worker, and you tell the worker that you increase his wages. Now you can do two jobs. Pretty much. But uh, McDonald's, which is at the brunt of the minimum wage worker strike, et cetera, has decided that um, they're going to do a little bit of blowback. And you know, some people will say that fast food and McDonald's is a dehumanizing you know, uh, industry. Well, literally, McDonald's is going to start dehumanizing. In other words, they're going to replace people with machines. Exactly. You can now order in San Diego and other parts of California your own quarter pound bacon cheeseburger from a welcoming, non-judging machine. I'd be cool with that. I mean, and the thing is, is that we've we've known this is going to happen. That's what happens when you increase the minimum wage and you make it more expensive for uh, for employers to have employees. They're just going to replace them with machines that can do the same job. Exactly. Um, Now, this pilot program for McDonald's was started last winter winter and has been expanded over the past couple months. But they're a long way away from catching up to Chili's, which is the king of humanless ordering which now has 45,000 tabletop tablets nationwide. Oh, good for them. Now, the interesting thing is um, I got into a comment uh, debate with somebody over one of these arguments, and, of course, they're pro-minimum wage, and I'm uh, for open market and, you know, worth what your skill is. (laughs) And I responded to them by saying, you know, if these protesters for for higher minimum wage – would have spent as much effort graduating high school and learning more skills so they didn't have to work minimum wage jobs. You know, what can I say? Then maybe they'd be making more money. Then maybe they wouldn't be in the position they're in today. See, but I, I understand. Like I, I, I believe that uh, minimum wage jobs uh, are are mainly for people that are you know like high school or, or college students. But I think what happens is we find people that that they get themselves into situations where they have to work minimum wage jobs in order to support their family, and uh, they end up working so much that 
that they never have time to uh, to do anything else. Uh, so so they find themselves basically getting home from work and just being exhausted and tired and and not having time to do to do really anything else. And so they end up 20 years later still in the same dead end job. Uh, but to to think that uh, that you know, that's ever going to change. I just, I, I don't see it happening. If you want to change your situation, if you want to make more money, you need to go out and, and grab life and just start doing things to, to make more money. You need to go out and start finding alternative ways to make money. I agree. Now let's move a little bit south of the border and Venezuela. Oh, Venezuela, now, Venezuela has had a lot of problems since Hugo Chavez died and an even worse socialist, Maduro, took over. Uh, they've had toilet paper shortages, which, of course, you know, is like the big joke about the old Soviet Union. Uh, and it, but there is to, nothing funny about not having toilet paper. But to the Venezuelans, have, not having toilet paper is not as important as the shortages of fake breast implants that are occurring. The shortages of fake breast implants? Yes. A nation thought to have one of the world's highest plastic surgery rates. Uh, there's a report that beauty-obsessed Venezuelans are facing a scarcity of brand-name brand breast implants. As a matter of fact, they are going on the black market and taking or getting them from China, which don't have as rigorous safety and quality standards, and for the very most part are coming back the wrong size. I didn't know that they had brand-name breast implants oh you know uh breast implants in venezuela is so huge that the late uh, hugo chavez called the country's plastic surgery fixation monstrous and get this there have been twitter rallies going on that have the hashtag without boobs there is no paradise really yep and there was a uh, what hugo chavez was railing against was a practice of giving implants to girls on their 15th birthdays. Um, yeah, I'd be, I, I guess, um, I don't know. I, it's, it's not my business. It's certainly not something that I would do. I certainly wouldn't want to, if I had the small child, I wouldn't want them to get implants on their 15th birthday. I mean, I, I feel like that's kind of messed up, but of course uh, at the age of 15, I, I knew what I wanted and knew what I liked. So if a 15 year old wants to get a breast implant, I don't, I don't know. Are they, I mean, that's like your, are your boobs still growing at that age? I have no idea. You I don't, I don't know. Would tell me better than I would, but it seems to be a <laughs> cultural thing. And the thing about Venezuela is they're like Brazil. Um, they are model intensive beauty and youth is a number one, uh, you know, a status symbol. Okay. So anyway, moving on to last. I guess have, I didn't realize that you had to have uh, boobs to be beautiful. Well, like I said, it's a cultural thing. We are looking, think, well, we are looking at things through an American paradigm. Yeah. And, you know, the old uh, Quaker paradigm. Now, the unfortunate thing is, is that the feds and probably DHS have run out of places, run out of police stations, run out of other things to send over their excess uh, military equipment that's coming back from, from the desert. So now there's a new federal program in Los Angeles where the, US, the Los Angeles Unified School District is getting a stockpile of grenade launchers, M16s, and MRAM vehicles. I saw that. I saw that, Ken. But you know what? Um, they are sending back the three grenade launchers, the keeping the M16s and the uh, mine resistant vehicles, but they're sending back the grenade launchers. Yeah, I guess they don't have really any training that they can give the teachers or. I just I, I can't think of a situation where you would need a grenade launcher in a school. I can't think of one. Ken Shorjan, thank you for joining us this evening, everyone. Check out his website, thedailyeconomist.com. The Angel Clark Show will return Monday for Police State Monday at 5 p.m. Eastern. Until that time, remember, no army can stop an idea whose time has come. So I'm just going, you know, it's a part. Hey, heck yeah. This is The Angel Clark Show.